Close your eyes, watch your breath coming in and going out. Try to watch it all the way in, all the way out. Try to keep your attention as steady as you can. The Buddha taught tranquility and insight together. Because after all, if your mind is running around, it's like a person running around. You run past a tree and if someone were to ask you what was in the tree, you wouldn't be able to answer with any real thoroughness or accuracy. You may have noticed a few details as you ran past, but most of it would be a blur. If you really want to know the tree, you have to stand still and watch it. The more still you are, the more you notice about even the subtle movements of the tree as the wind blows through, as ants and other animals move around in it. And it's the same with the mind. If you really want to see the movements of the mind, you have to get as still as you can. Because when the Buddha talks about all the different causes for suffering, they're all movements, actions. And when we run along with the actions, we don't see them. It's when we stop and are very still, then we can see something move past. So focus your attention on the breath, wherever you feel it in the body. You can feel it at the nose, you can feel it at the abdomen, you can feel it at the chest. If you get really sensitive, you begin to notice the movement of the breath energy everywhere in the body. That's ideal. But notice where it's clearest. Focus your attention there and then try to maintain that focus. And if the breath isn't comfortable, you can try other kinds of breathing. You're free to breathe in whatever way you want. Because the basic principle of concentration is that the mind has a sense of well-being. Then it's willing to settle down. And you can create that well-being in lots of ways. Before you meditate, you can think thoughts of goodwill. Goodwill for all beings. And then goodwill for yourself. That thought lifts the mind. Anything you find that puts you in the right mood for practicing, think those thoughts first. Then you can focus on the breath. Breathe in a way that feels really good, because the breath energy can be very gratifying if you pay attention to it. Then as the mind settles down, you begin to notice what works and what does not work in settling it down, and that way you get some insight into the mind. So it's not the case that you do concentration practice and then do insight practice as something separate. The insight arises as you concentrate the mind. As the Buddha said, if you want to gain tranquility and insight, you do jhana. You do right concentration. And right concentration will develop both qualities. After all, there's directed thought and evaluation. That's the activity of discernment, as you try to get the mind to settle down and you see what works and doesn't, what doesn't work. You understand causation in your mind. And you use that knowledge to get the mind even more still. So the stillness and the insight, they go together. There are cases where the Buddha says you start with insight first and then go to concentration. In other cases where you go from concentration and go to insight. But when you taught breath meditation, you taught the two of them together. When they go together, they help each other along. So try to get the mind still with the breath. Learn how to train yourself so that the breath feels really satisfying inside. And that way you gladden the mind and you concentrate the mind. And you can release the mind from whatever is weighing it down. And as the mind gets trained like this and understands itself a lot better, it causes a lot less suffering for itself. And when you're not causing suffering for yourself, it doesn't, there's no suffering to spread around to other people, too. So meditation is a gift for yourself and for other people. And as with any gift, when you're making the gift, you want to do it well.